In this video, we're going to be covering how to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams for the symphony supported beam with a uniformly distributed load. By the end of this video, you'll be able to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams for a beam and use this knowledge to solve similar problems. Let's start by defining what shear force and bending moments are. Shear force is the force that acts perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the beam. It tends to cause the beam to slide or shear apart at a particular section. It is denoted as F and can act upwards and downwards. A bending moment happens when there is a distance between the applied force and the point in which the moment is acting. The force then causes the beam to bend about the point. It is denoted as M and can either act clockwise or anti-clockwise. The shear force diagram shows the variation of the shear force along the length of the beam. The vertical axis represents the magnitude of the shear force, and the horizontal axis represents the length of the beam. The diagram is typically shown with positive values of shear force above the horizontal axis, and negative values below the axis. The bending moment diagram shows the variation of the bending moment along the length of the beam. The vertical axis represents the magnitude, and the horizontal axis represents the length of the beam. Again, the diagram is typically shown with positive values above the horizontal axis, and negative values below the axis. Now, let's work through an example of how to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams for a beam with a UDL. If we look at the beam, we can see that it is 6 meters in length and has a uniformly distributed load, W, of 50 newtons per meter applied across the whole length of the beam. The beam has supports at either end labeled RA and RB. Because of the symmetry of our arrangement, we know that RA and RB are both equal to 150 newtons. If you need help calculating these, please watch our video on how to calculate the support reactions of a beam with a uniformly distributed load. To do this, either click the link in the top right of the video or follow the link in the video description box. In order to draw our diagrams, we need to make imaginary cuts along the beam where we are going to determine our shear force and bending moments. In both instances, we will be taking into consideration the forces to the left of the cuts. It must be noted that as our beam is in equilibrium, the total forces acting on the beam are zero, and the total moments are also zero. We'll begin by drawing the shear force diagram. First, we need to cut the beam at sections where we want to determine the shear force. In this example, we'll cut the beam at two meter intervals. To calculate the shear force of the UDL, we'll multiply W by the distance x to the left of the cut. When x equals zero, the only force acting on the beam is the 150 newton reaction force RA, so the shear force at x equals zero is positive 150 newtons on our diagram. When x equals two, we still have the 150 newton reaction force RA, but now we have the introduction of the UDL at 50 newtons per meter in the opposite direction. As there is two meters to the left of our cut, the shear force at this point is calculated by 150 minus 50 times 2, which equals 50 newtons. When x equals 4, we continue using the same equation as above, apart from we change the distance from 2 meters to 4 meters. This becomes 150 minus 50 times 4, which equals minus 50 newtons. Finally, when x equals 6, we have the addition of the 150 newton reaction force RB in the positive direction. So, the shear force at this point is 150 minus 50 times 6 plus 150, which equals 0 newtons. By connecting the dots, we get the finished shear force diagram for our beam, which looks like this. The diagram shows how the shear force acting on a beam changes along its length, and also identifies the point of maximum shear stress when the line crosses the neutral axis. Next, we'll look at how to draw a bending moment diagram for the same beam. This time, we'll be making cuts at one meter intervals to achieve a more accurate graph. As a bending moment is equal to force times distance, the formula for the UDL is Wx times x over two. This is because the UDL W spans the distance x, but it's considered to act about the centroid of the portion, which is halfway across. When x equals zero, the only force acting on the beam is the reaction force RA, but as it has a distance of zero meters, the bending moment is also zero. So, our diagram starts at zero newton meters. When x equals one, the reaction force RA now has a distance of one meter, and we have the introduction of the UDL. So, 
the bending moment becomes 150 times 1 minus 50 times 1 times 1 over 2, which equals 125 newton meters. When x equals 2, the reaction force Ra now has a distance of 2 meters, and the span of the UDL is also 2 meters. So, our bending moment becomes 150 times 2 minus 50 times 2 times 2 over 2, which equals 200 newton meters. When x equals 3, the distance of Ra is 3 meters, and the span of the UDL is also 3 meters. So, our bending moment is 150 times 3 minus 50 times 3 times 3 over 2, which equals 225 newton meters. When x equals 4, Ra now has a distance of 4 meters, and the UDL also spans 4 meters. So the bending moment at this point is 150 times 4 minus 50 times 4 times 4 over 2, which equals 200 newton meters. When x equals 5, Ra has a distance of 5 meters, and the UDL has a span of 5 meters. So our bending moment is given by 150 times 5 minus 50 times 5 times 5 over 2, which equals 125 newton meters. When x equals 6, Ra now has a distance of 6 meters, and the UDL spans the whole beam. The reaction force Rb is not considered at this point, as it has a distance of 0 meters. Therefore, our bending moment is 150 times 6 minus 50 times 6 times 6 over 2, which equals 0 newton meters. By connecting the dots, we get the finished bending moment diagram for our beam, which looks like this. The curvature of the graph indicates that if we had calculated more points along the beam, our graph would have been a smooth curve. We have also identified the point of maximum deflection to be 3 meters. And that's it. We hope you enjoyed this video showing how to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams for the simply supported beam with the UDL. Thank you for watching. Please check the channel for similar engineering related content.